welcome back to um, my classes so today we'll be uh, studying about uh, this is not uh, this is a bmw uh, symbol actually biomedical waste management so we had seen in last class about solid waste management but in biomedical waste management as i had mentioned earlier it includes infectious agents so it should be taken care very uh, properly otherwise there will be chances of spreading diseases so today we'll be seeing uh, the categories of waste and how the waste is being disposed and uh, various methods used and the various uh, color coding system of biomedical waste okay so what is bi biomedical waste it is nothing but waste generated during diagnosis testing treatment research or production of biological products for humans or animals it is given by world health organization so it is nothing but a waste generated during diagnosis testing treatment or research part for humans or animals okay so we have healthcare waste uh, majority will be non-risk waste 75 to 90 percent and risk waste is 10 to 25 percent but the problem with this waste is if this 10 to 20 percent waste if it combines with this it will be a big problem because uh, it is highly infectious waste this uh, 10 to 25 percentage if it goes to the non-risk waste that also will become polluted just like uh, a polluted water is added to a normal water the entire water will be spoiled so similarly the healthcare waste uh, categorization is very important so there will be sources like we know all these hospitals, labs, research centers, blood banks, nursing homes. So all people are under risk. People, the sanitary workers who are taking care of this waste or who are collecting this waste, medical or paramedical staffs, patient and the bystanders and attenders and general public. Everyone in this chain is under risk. So it can cause infection, it can be uh, genotoxic, chemical toxicity will be there, radioactive hazards are there, physical injuries and public sensitivity. So genotoxic drugs are there, infection, it can cause infection by hepatitis like uh, hepatitis B infection or HA infection if you get contact with blood bond uh, particles and the chemical toxicity like uh, the poisons burns and intoxication radioactive hazards are there it can cause headache dizziness physical injuries if you mishandle a sharp instruments you get physical injury and the materials like chemicals and explosive agents and some uh, waste with high uh, content of heavy metals like mercury and pressure containers like oxygen cylinders so biomedical waste uh, act came into india uh, in the year 1998 and it was amended in 2000 so before that there was no proper handling and there was no rules for uh, handling biomedical waste it uh, came into existence in 1998 so this is what we need to study According to WHO, study, WHO standard, we have 10 categories of waste. The waste which is uh, produced from this uh, hospitals or anywhere, uh, the biomedical waste will be categorized into 10 categories. The category 1 is human anatomical waste like human tissues, organs or body parts which came after surgery or surgical procedure or swab collection or any other tissue collection biopsy. And the treatment or dispersal option uh, is incineration or deep burial. It will go to incineration or it will go to deep burial. Category number two is animal waste, such as animal tissues, organ parts, bleeding parts, blood, and experimental animals. The same goes to incineration, deep burial. And category three is microbiology and biotechnology waste. So it is produced from vaccines, humans, animal cell cultures such things category 4 is waste sharp so it should go to the puncture proof uh, cabin and will go disinfecting and shredding okay so the category 3 is again microwaving and incineration this category 3 waste category 5 is discarded medicine and cytotoxic drugs it is either incinerated or 
dumped in uh, landfills so we had studied landfills it is not just dumping dumping with uh, excavated earth is landfill so it will be either destructed or it will be uh, placed in landfills so category 6 is solid waste such as oil plaster cotton dressings it will be either incinerator or autoclaving category 7 solid waste will be autoclaved or microwave or shredding waste gen generated such as shock waste such as tubing catheters or IV sets category A is just nothing but liquid waste waste generated after laboratory and washing cleaning and housekeeping stuff can use it to disinfectant category number is number nine is incineration ash produced after the incineration and biomedical waste okay, it will be disposed into landfill and the last one is chemical waste which is of uh, production of chemicals and biological uh, products and it will uh, go to the landfill so this is a little bit uh, confusing uh, because uh, many categories are overlapping but uh, just you need to learn the names of it not much into details so this is how we segregate our hospital waste. We have seen all these colors of bins, either in hospital or uh, lab or any colleges or anywhere where the biomedical waste is being produced. Okay, so this is a color we commonly see in green, green, red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so Let's start with yellow. So what all things goes to yellow? The human anatomical waste such as placenta or other pathological specimen, soil in and contaminated gowns, drapes, bandages, dressing, swab stick. All these things go to yellow. The main thing is yellow and red receives infectious waste. But the yellow waste yellow bean collects all these which consist of blood and which goes to incineration which things are goes to incineration and it will not be including mostly the plastic items you can see the plastic items are not here so most of the infectious plastic items will go to the red pack you can see the gloves iv sets drains syringe not needles plastic culture plates tubes this is dishes pet dishes and all plastic waste except shops but here the infectious waste but not plastic non plastic like swabs the cottons animal tissues bandages this will go to uh, incineration but this goes to shredding they'll uh, disinfect and before go to um, the shredding and they will go to shredding or sometimes it will be recycled because since it is plastic so the next one is black pin black pin usually the household items like wrappers uh, kitchen waste paper this is mostly uh, the other waste produced from the labs or hospitals will be collected in black this can be handled easy so this is a color coding of um, our categories this one, two, three, six goes to yellow bags and it will be treated by incineration. Three, six, and seven goes to red bag. You can see this three, six, and overlapping here. That's why I showed this picture yellow and red. What goes to yellow, what goes to red. So, this you need to learn what goes to yellow the categories. The blue and white four and seven. This is plastic bag. It should be puncture proof, autoclaving, or shredding. This is autoclaving and chemical treatment red red one this red one will be autoclaving or chemical treatment or shredding this is incineration this yellow goes to incineration okay red goes to autoclaving and shredding and this yellow uh, not uh, blue or white is puncture proof shops it will go to autoclaving and shredding and the black all fine and and ten disposal in landfill okay so red yellow blue and mm, black 
So sometimes so there will be symbols like this biohazard symbol or cytotoxic hazard symbol will be put on the biomedical waste and should be transported to um, biomedical waste management system. In Kerala, it is the image in Palakkad, Palakkad district. Image means Indian Medical Association Go Echo Green. That is I M A. G E Indian Medical Association Go Echo Green that is uh, run by Indian Medical Association that is the uh, agency which handles biomedical waste uh, in Kerala. So every institute or every every hospital or clinical setup or lab who's handling biomedical waste should have a license from image and this image people will come regularly to collect this and it should be segregated properly otherwise uh, image will fine you uh, and they won't take uh, non-segregated biomedical waste because it is very difficult to segregate and it is the disposal is based on the category so category segregation is very important in biomedical waste so next we see the methods how we dispose it okay so now we have seen already the color coding and the categories of waste and what goes to which bin and storage transportation so these are the treatment and disposal options for biomedical waste so this is what i was talking incineration incineration uh, was present uh, in solid waste management also but it is mainly used in biomedical waste Next one is chemical disinfection, wet thermal treatment, microwave radiation, encapsulation, safe burying, and inertization. So, the incineration is nothing but burning of the biomedical waste. It is high temperature and oxidation process will occur, which reduces organic and other waste to inorganic incombustible matter in the volume will be reduced by 80 to 90 percentage so basically we have three types of incinerators double chamber pyrolytic single chamber and rotary kins this is the most commonly used in biomedical waste setup but uh, this is the most apt one because it has a double chamber so the first chamber is this one and second chamber is this one so in the first chamber they will be burning uh, and the temperature will be high and again the residue will be again burnt in the second chamber okay. this is a second chamber this is a first chamber and there will be oxygen supply here so it will be burned twice so that's why it's known as double chamber insulation and temperature here it will be 500 to 700 degrees celsius and this is uh, 1100 to 1200 so temperature will be more so if it is a single chamber if it is a single chamber uh, there will be a 10 to 20 percentage residue which cannot be burned in single chamber but in uh, double chamber that residue also can be burned further so the amount of residue will be further reduced but it has to be burned at a higher temperature so it will be 1000 to 1500 temperature at the second chamber so this is a double chamber incinerator also known as pyrolytic so the single chamber there will be only one chamber temperature will be uh, around up to uh, 700 to 1000 so this is a single chamber one but the rotary kin is the most uh, expensive one it is uh, not very common since it has around 50 lakhs uh, around cost so it is the most uh, apt one uh, to keep rotating um, and uh, continuously rotation and there will be continuous monitoring there should be continuous monitoring so this is not uh, easy for everyone to adopt this method since it's very expensive but it is the most perfect method of uh, incineration you can see how big uh, the machine is so in uh, better countries uh, or western countries uh, they adopt this method so single chamber or double chamber and rotary can each one has its uh, advantages most uh, least advantages uh, is single chamber then we have a, a pyrolytic or double chamber then this rotary kit oh, this is all about incinerator so incinerator is a common question uh, kept on asking for exam so next is disinfection this is like we keep adding uh, chemical products 
before the before the waste being uh, go to the um, scavengers or uh, go to the disposal okay so we can use formaldehyde ethylene oxide glutaraldehyde sodium hypochlorite and chlorine dioxide this is all disinfection and with thermal treatment is like uh, it is autoclaving we have seen autoclaving 120 degree 1 celsius and 15 lbs pressure and 15 minutes so this is uh, with thermal and microwave irradiation we can also do at 2040 megahertz and a wavelength of this is frequency and wavelength of 12.24 centimeter the microorganisms will be destroyed encapsulation is nothing but it's a procedure which involves filling big containers made of high density polyethylene or metal drums with waste so this uh, bins will be mixed with uh, waste and high density polyethylene okay so these containers then fill with immobilizing material so waste will be mixed with an immobilizing material like cement or something after this containers are sealed and disposed of to the landfill sites so this is how we do encapsulation so big uh, containers will be filled with waste or polyethylene or polyethylene or metal drums okay so sorry polyethylene or metal drums filled with waste and some immobilizing material usually cement uh, we use so cement we use and it will be disposed to landfilling site this is known as encapsulation we encapsulated uh, waste with a immobilizing material within a uh, polyethylene or metal drums so we know that uh, big drums of tars and other uh, polyethylene drums we can use it for this purpose but it is very rarely used so you can see this is a drum uh, where the waste is being added and again uh, cement or tar or something will be kept on adding and later these products will be this will be disposed to the landfills okay so that is encapsulation it is also known as solidification so immobilizing cement will be added to this so it won't be able to move around or move into the air or it can be uh, kept at one place so usually it will be kept in landfill sites so safe burying is nothing but uh, the burying we had seen in our um, solid waste management which is buried uh, keeping it by uh, digging it digging a trench okay so inertization is it is a process involves mixing waste with cement and other substance before disposal in order to minimize the risk of toxic substances okay so this is nothing but uh, encapsulation but here that uh, usage of drums is not um, uh, not there that just mixing with some immobilizing material immobilizing material and uh, it is disposed so inertization is mixing waste with cement or other substance before disposing so inertization which made into a drum or polyethylene drums is known as encapsulation the idea behind inertization or encapsulation is immobilizing it by keeping or mixing it with cement or other things so that it won't fly off or it won't get mixed with any water bodies or uh, other uh, and it won't create any nuisance okay so this is i was uh, talking about image manturuti kanjikot palakot so indian medical association go echo green so this is the agency which is taking care of biomedical waste in kerala so there will be an agency in every state uh, there should be a state there should be agency otherwise uh, that will create uh, this waste will create a big public health problem okay thank you that's all about uh, biomedical waste management what we need to learn is categories of waste color coding and the uh, methods methods are the most commonly asked incineration or incinerator then this chemical or thermal microwave are just uh, using microwave radiation or with thermal like uh, autoclaving and chemicals like formaldehyde etc etc encapsulation and inertization are mixing it with cement or other content encapsulation using drums and safe burying an incineration has three types of double chamber single chamber or octricans and its advantages so it's uh, biomedical waste management okay thank you so i'll come up with a new topic in next class